We're here at Google's headquarters in New York City to see the company's Project Glass, the wearable computing device it's been working on for a couple of years and nobody's really gotten a chance to play with. I'm personally excited because I'll finally get to put it on and see what it's like for the first time ever. You know, people want to be connected and technology has enabled that. But a problem is that it also, that technology creates distractions and takes you out of the moment. What we think about on the team is how to solve that problem. How to get technology out of the way when you're doing activity, but have it there when you need it. So this is a fight against the, like, glancing down at the smartphone. Our key part of us solving that problem is bringing technology closer to your senses. That was sort of a hunch we had, that if we did that, it would allow you to connect in a faster way. But then a challenge we had, and Isabel's going to speak to this, is the design challenge. How do we get technology out of the way? If you're going to wear something on your face, how can you get technology out of the way when you don't need it? I think when people see glass, the big thing is like, what is this weird object on everybody's face? I mean, it's, they're not, you call them glass, but they're not glasses. I mean, there's obviously something else. So what, what were the design challenges with making this thing real? Well, I asked myself the same question, you know, 20 months ago when I first joined the team. And I saw all these people around. I, I came into the office and, and they were wearing this. Um, so, what do you think? I think it's great. I actually prefer this, to be honest with you, to the new design. <laughs> but but this, is, so this is the original prototype. This is the stuff that everybody was messing around with when you got there. Yeah. and. You know, it, it freaked me out a little bit, I have to say, but at the same time, you know, the team is really, really passionate about this idea. Uh, and I could sense that, and I could see the experiments that, that was going on, and, and I, you know, I finally could, could wrap my head around this idea of, of that we, we need to, you know, remove technology, but, but still, you know, wear it. A little bit, it's... Oh, I see, what you really want is... Yeah, it's I mean, I can see it fine. It says OK Glass 325. It's mm -hmm. oh, record a video. OK. Oh, yeah. Oops. And now I can see. So this is seeing what I'm seeing, though, like because it is, yeah. like, I have a desire to do that, but I don't have to. You don't no. have to. You just live your life. Yeah. OK Glass, take a picture. That's very, I mean, that's very cool. So you've got this kind of one size fits all right now, which is, this is what glass looks like. There are a lot of people, the same people who kind of like, they see 3D glasses and they're like, oh, I don't want to wear those. And people who have to wear glasses for, like I do, mm -hmm. you know, what, how, do you, how do you meet that challenge? I mean, you've got a design here, but we're talking about lots of people are very different. They've got, you know, prescriptions. Like, how do you, how do you battle that? I mean, this is okay. This, if I were sailing, you know, if I were going to go sailing, I might use the blue, the uh, sea, breeze. Sea, breeze. sea breeze. Is that what they're called? Uh, we might, we're going to have to talk about that. I thought it was sky. I thought it was sky. Sky is what they're called. I said sea breeze. Yeah, it's much better. We designed it in a way so that the components are off to one side, and this frame, you can remove it. It's detachable from from the frame, and its current form in this prototype, it's there is a little screw here that you unscrew and you remove this frame and you can attach different kinds of frames. And are you working with partners, um, like Ray-Ban, for instance? I mean, I, I've actually talked to a lot of people and they're like, are they gonna do something with Ray-Ban? Because obviously they're very popular. Yeah. Um, are you talking to people like that? Building an ecosystem around this is very important to our strategy. Uh, right now we're working on a reference model for the prescription lenses, but we definitely want to partner with others. Uh, okay, Glass, Google, when was the first Terminator made? 1984. When does this become a retail product? When can I go into Best Buy and buy it? We are aiming on the team to actually have it out as a consumer product by the end of this year. In 2013? 2013. Like, like to purchase? Yeah. Full. Regular people can purchase? Regular people, fully po polished product. Uh, we don't want this to be a, a niche thing. We think this can help every human being. And uh, so we look forward to this being used by millions and millions of people. Doesn't it seem weird to you that to get people having more human interactions, we've reached a point where in order to, you're saying I want to see people having more human experiences, more human interactions, that we have to augment ourselves with glass. Okay, here we go. Searching for GPS. Hold on, I've just stopped it like an idiot. Okay, glass. Google nearby restaurants. Loading directions, okay. 
It's now telling me to cross the street. Have we done something wrong? Like, have we screwed up somewhere fundamental that you're like, I just want to have a more human experience. Let me put on these robot sunglasses. It is a paradox, and I think we continue to need to make it even better, make it faster, make it lighter. You know, this is just baby steps.